Hey there. How are you? Hi. This is my first Instagram live. It's your first. All right. Well, I'm happy it to is. be your first. Yeah. You uh, I'm Ben. I'm Ben Lindsay from Backstage. It's so wow. great that you could join us today. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Of course. Of course. Now, um, I know that you are in the midst of production for yeah. season 17. Um, yeah. what, what, what is that? For, first of all, congratulations on a great premiere and everything is off to a running start, of course, as always in Grey's Anatomy. But uh, what, what's it been like to be bringing this character to the screen, particularly during these times? Um, well, first of all, I just want to say that we're so thankful to be back because there was a period of time where we thought that maybe it wasn't going to happen. We were hoping to come back in August and then that got pushed and then mm -hmm. in September. So we're happy to be back and filming. I am excited to be experiencing the pandemic in a different way. Maybe excited isn't the word, but I'm interested to be experiencing the pandemic in a different way. Mm -hmm. since so being a frontline worker, um, it's definitely a wild season. It's definitely different. And, and what is interesting is that behind the scenes is just as different as in front of the camera for us because of our, our new Disney protocols keeping us safe. Um, but I'm happy to be telling this story and I think we're all just really thankful that we're able to get this story out this season. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm sure that the nearly 3,000 people tuning in right now, hello everyone, uh, is equally excited to, to see this story being brought to the screen and thankful that, that you and the Grey's Anatomy folks are the ones telling it. Um, it's, it's definitely, uh, uh, the show's always been an escape, but the fact that it's able to mirror our current circumstances is all the more significant. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Now, now you've been with this show since 2000. 100 years. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thereabouts, thereabouts. Um, th this character, Dr. Joe, she's she's given you so much to play with over the years. Yeah. Um, j just reflecting on it, what's been the most gratifying aspect of, of getting to live with this character for years at a time at this point? I think one of the most exciting things about working on the show is that we really don't know everything about our characters. So every season, it's really exciting playing a character that every season you learn something new about. Like, I didn't know that she was married. I didn't, you know, before. Mm -hmm. it was an abusive relationship. I didn't even know that she was homeless until I think episode eight, maybe, of my first uh then so I feel like we're constantly learning new exciting things about our character and also when you sit with a character for this long you get to be on a journey of growth with them mm -hmm. go through their heartbreak and their pain and their happiness and their wins and their loses and that's really amazing do you feel I'm sure that it's the 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 process quote-unquote of getting into this character's skin has become easier over the years she's a little yeah. close to you now that you know her um, as yeah. well but for, from the get, do you feel like playing her came with ease? Was it a natural fit? Or w what was the process to really build the character from the ground up? It's interesting because I think that because I didn't know much about her, I look back and actually wish I'd played her differently in, mm. in like the early seasons. I wish I'd had like information about her in that scene mm -hmm. that now because I would have like done it differently. But that's not how it works, obviously. <laughs> right. Um, so I think as the character's grown and been more fleshed out, I've had a better understanding of where she's coming from. So I think that, you know, you step into a character and you sort of have to bring your own, um, all the hearts, <laughs> so cute. Um, you have to bring all of your own backstory kind of because you're not mm -hmm. one. And then as that changes with the show, you change with the character. So yeah. I think that, yes, I sort of, what's interesting is when we first started the show we said you know we wanted to find out about our characters and they kind of said we're going to write according to your personalities mm. so there's something that everyone brings to the table that then gets incorporated in their character so I do think it's a right fit in that regard but um you do grow with the character okay. yeah absolutely I mean it, it really is kind of a dream gig for an actor to to land on a show as renowned as Grey's Anatomy, to, to build a character that is as loved as Dr. Joe is in this series. Um, to, to rewind a bit, back, backstage, you know, we're all about the, the working actors of the world, their early career performers, creators. Yeah. Um, how is it that the performing arts first started playing a role in your life? And then 
how, what was the shift to actually pursuing it professionally? What did that journey look like for you? Yeah, so I was, this sounds crazy. I was four years old when I knew I wanted to be an actress. And um, I watched The Wizard of Oz and I understood that that was Judy Garland playing Dorothy. Mm -hmm. I want to be Dorothy, I wanted to be Judy Garland. And so I was just someone, a kid that watched a lot of musicals, watched Annie, used to wear my English school uniform and jump on the bed and sing a high <laughs> five. I, yeah. I did my first talent show when I was five. I sung a Dolly Parton song. Do you recall the song? Yeah, it's called Me and Little Andy. I don't know if people will necessarily know about it. It's really oh, okay. bad. It's about girls. I'm a Dolly just, fan. You know, okay, okay. <laughs> So, um, and I won the show, star quality, obviously. I, I won that little talent show when I was five. And, um, and then I auditioned for a school in England called Italia Conti. Mm -hmm. And I was 11. And then I was 12 when I got my first agent. And so I was just sort of more working in theater when I was younger. Mm -hmm. And um, I was going to go to, I wanted to go to RADA. That was my dream. And I did yeah. not get into RADA. Okay. And so I was like frustrated, but I'd been studying theater for so long that I thought, I don't really know what I'm, what being in front of a camera is going to be like. That's, that's a different medium, right? That's a different <laughs> technique. And so I ended up signing up for the New York Film Academy in New York's first one year acting for film program. Mm -hmm. I did that. And then I moved to LA and got my agent and thankfully started working. So that sort of was my journey to being where I am today. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you had that theater training from early on, but I feel like the shift to on camera, get, getting that foundational training at the New York Film Academy must have been pretty uh, necessary to what you're doing today. It is a, it is a different very, muscle. A bit. It's really different. I remember, you know, in theater, you're like, hello, you know, you're like, you know, like um, yeah. And then I remember thinking like, oh, I can do this. And, you know, going to my first film class and then we would watch back on camera, you know, the work we'd done. And I was like, I'm terrible. Like, I'm really bad on, I got to figure this out. And so yeah. I really, I really studied for that year and kind of honed that because you're not real. I wasn't realizing, you know, how intimate this is on camera, how mm. I pick up and, and it's just, it's just different to theater. Yeah, stuff. absolutely. And I, I do find it pretty interesting that um, I, I know growing up that you spend time between the States and the UK. And then yeah. you mentioned this Italian school that you went to. You are very well-traveled um, and experienced different cultures. Do you feel like you take kind of those experiences to your acting? Does, does that inform what you're doing at all as a performer? I think so. I think that honestly... I think that no matter if you're well-traveled or not, I just think that your own life, the ups and downs in your own life, yeah, that the highs and the lows, and sometimes really the lows, kind of make you a better actor because you, there's a lot of moments when whatever character you're playing kind of crashes and hits that rock bottom. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, I think pulling on your own life, that's the way, I mean, like I was taught Meisner method acting, mm -hmm. pull it on your own life experiences really helps me. So when Jo was, for example, she had the episode where she met her mom for the first time. Mm -hmm. and there's a scene that was like 14 pages long of me across from my mother. And I lost my mom when I was 19. And so I, in order to really connect and like feel that pain and, and understand like sort of what she was going through was thinking, put it in terms of like being able to sit with my mom and like, what would that be like if I hadn't seen her for a long time and to be able to tell her that I needed her. So yeah. those are the things that more than being well-traveled or living here or there, I just think your real life, you can mm -hmm. tie to it as an actor. Yeah, yeah. I mean, your, your own experience and your, I mean, your physical body is the vessel to what you're yeah. doing on camera and stage. So you're, of course, bringing yourself to it. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it must be a powerful experience when you can connect the dots in that way. It is. Um, it's powerful and it can be painful. <laughs> it yeah, can be absolutely. <laughs> find it hard to shake, you know. Well, well you, you mentioned that you moved to Los Angeles after getting this training at New York Film Academy. And I had read that you met your husband while waitressing in L.A. I did. So it wasn't from the get that you were booking work. You had some survival jobs no. along the way. No, I was very broke for a long time. 
um, I definitely found my first roommate on Craigslist and shared a bedroom with her. Thank God she wasn't like a crazy person. Um, no, I, I, you know, had to support myself during those years and it takes a long time. What people don't realize is, is that you can be recurring on a show and you can kind of save up a little bit of money, but it's not enough to quit necessarily mm -hmm. your day job. And so there's a lot of times when you're you know, working, like for example, when I was working on Californication, um, I think I was still waitressing here and there, like picking uh -huh. up shift here and there because the assumption as an actor always, if, or if you're like me is, I don't know if I'm going to ever work again. And right. so, um, no, I definitely, we met each other. Uh, he was a bartender and I was waiting tables. And that's how we met each other a long time ago. This is like, oh my God, 13 or 14 years, something like that years ago. Um, but it's actually nice to relate to him because he works on different shows too. He's working on Snowfall too. And it's kind of nice actually come up together in the industry that way. Because yeah. Know, old days yeah <laughs> yeah yeah you were on the even playing ground uh from the very beginning and now yeah. obviously both of you have your own careers it's great exactly yeah well in addition to grace i would also love to touch on your experience in the voiceover space um i'm sure a lot of the people joining us today are also familiar with your work in tomb raider you, exactly. you've done voiceover on various programs various projects yeah. how did that kind of start for you and uh, is, is this something that you always pursued? I feel like it's not necessarily a, a no, path not, that you set no, yourself on right away. It's not you know? something that I actually remotely thought about, to be honest. And I remember getting um, an audition in. It was one of my first auditions with my agent. And it said, it said something like, it didn't say video game. It said like interactive something or other. And I remember mm -hmm. thinking, oh, this is just some ridiculous project that's like clearly some weird indie something. Sure. <laughs> um, and I remember going and then, and then kind of um, when I was outside, I remember hearing, okay, it's a video game. And, and I remember thinking like, it's kind of like Lara Croft. And so I even dressed kind of like her. And then <laughs> I went and it was a video diary to the screen because in the first game, Laura is keeping a diary. So that was my audition. And then they wanted to see just how your body moved. And then that was it. And then I actually um, almost didn't make the callback break and it came down to three girls and I gave myself a concussion on my waitress job. Wow, I, right. <laughs> I, was bringing, I was bringing plates into the kitchen and I lifted my head up and I hit it on a shelf. And I was like, I have a concussion, I cannot go. And I remember the, um, <laughs> casting director telling my agent they really want her she needs to come back if she wants the gig mm -hmm. and so I almost did not play Lara Croft wow <laughs> and I'm so glad that I came back and then got cast but that's how I got into voiceover and now I'm obsessed with it yeah yeah I mean of course you, you are beloved in, in the Tomb Raider franchise at this point that's so funny that you almost missed that callback I had also read that you almost missed the Grey's Anatomy callback I did on for so I Tomb almost missed that because of Tomb Raider. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was at Comic-Con when that happened. Yeah. So I had met, um, so I knew Shonda because she had a, a pilot back in the day that spring before I started Grey's called Gilded Lilies. Gilded mm -hmm. Lilies. And um, I tested for it. When what that means that people don't know with watching is that it means that you're coming down to like the last two people. So, mm -hmm. um, so I tested for the network for ABC and I didn't get it. It was me and another girl. And I didn't get it. And then I ended up in True Blood. And then as True Blood finished that weekend, I had to go to Comic-Con. And my agent had said to me, I was at Comic-Con on a Friday. My agent had said to me, um, it's such a shame because Shonda really wants you to audition for a new intern class for Grey's Anatomy. And all of the auditions were on Friday. And I was in San Diego. So I was like, okay, well, it's not meant to be. And then on the Saturday, I heard that she hadn't found who she had wanted. Yeah. There's five girls in on the Monday. And so I was doing Comic-Con and quickly learning like doctor dialogue. And then went in on the Monday, heard on Wednesday that I had it. It was me, it, it was between me and another girl in New York, apparently. And I got it on the Wednesday and then I started work on the Friday. Wow. You, you never know how one thing will lead to the next in never. that. Yeah, yeah. never. So, so when it comes down to it, these, these are two pretty significant audition experiences in your career. Yeah. Um, what's the number one piece of audition advice for our audience today? Um, it's really hard 
I think this is the hardest thing to feel, but to feel equal to a casting director for me took me a long time mm -hmm. to go and feel like they're doing their job, I'm doing mine, let's just go in and have fun and not feel like, oh my God, that's casting and like walking yeah. very intimidated. It took me a long time to just feel like they're a person doing their job. You know, like I can go in, I can play in the room. You have to almost convince yourself that you don't need the job is what I have felt like. Because if I feel like, oh my God, I really want this really bad, then my nerves start. Yeah. To yeah. go in and feel like I'm playing is, the, and that this person goes to the grocery store and they have a normal life and they're not like, you know, because I found casting directors very intimidating when I was first starting out. But they are on your side. They are normal people. Exactly. <laughs> And I, I know that sounds crazy to feel like, but it, when you're an actor and you're walking in and you really do want the job, it feels like their fate mm -hmm. is in their hands. And yeah. so there's a little bit of a power play there that I feel like if you can kind of get rid of and just feel like they're a normal person, let's have fun and walk out the room, you know, and just feel that way about it. But it's really difficult to do. It's taken me a long, long time to feel that way. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you only learned that experience. You gained that wisdom through through years of experience, so it makes sense. It over makes sense. and over and over, yeah. yeah. You, almost, you almost become a little bit desensitized to the nervousness of the situation. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, um, as a final question, I know we're taking a bit of a lockdown memory lane here, but let's bring us back up to Grey's Anatomy. Okay. Um, season 17, um, as I said, we're off to a running start with this one, but just generally speaking, what are you most excited about for audience to get their eyes on this season? Um, what, what, what's What's not necessarily what's around the corner. You can't give us any spoilers, of course, but what are you most looking forward to? Um, Joe has a big revelation about her career this season. This is the first time I'm saying this. Okay. Um, and that has been, I was really sh kind of surprised by it and I'm really excited to play it. It's a shift. Um, and I know I see Joe and Jackson um, so I'll talk about that too, since people keep asking me. Joe and Jack sent Jovery. Um, you're going to see a little bit more of a friendship develop next mm. episode between All them. Right. And, and then, we have scenes together because people have been asking me about that. Excellent. Well, I'm really excited to see where it all goes. Um, congrats on the season. Glad to see that you're staying well through all the state of the world and staying uh, working. Um, but uh, yeah, this has been great to get to know you a bit. Thank you so sure. much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you and thank you for joining us for this. I'm Ben and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you. Okay, bye.